It seems like every time redstone is brought up, somebody always chimes in that they don't understand it. I think in large part, this just seems rather daunting as a whole, but broken down it becomes pretty simple. Uh, going through the tutorial, I encourage you to download the map just to get a better view of the things as I'm explaining it, and so you can mess around with the stuff on your own. Now, what can you do with redstone? Well, you can activate all of these blocks. Here we have the sticky piston, regular piston, a note block, the light block, a dispenser, a powered rail, an iron door, a regular door, a fence door, and TNT. Now for these blocks to activate, they need to have a powered redstone signal, which that can be generated from a variety of different things. We have a button, which just creates a short burst, a lever, which toggles on and off, a stone pressure plate, which is only activated by when you or a mob walks over it, a wooden pressure plate, which is activated either when you walk over it, or when an item lands on it. A detector rail, which is a pressure plate just for minecarts. And finally, a redstone torch, which these are always active, unless they receive an input into the block that they're on. Now, when a power source is activated, it activates the blocks above, below, and directly to the sides of you can see there. Already get a different view. Now for block to be activated by the wire, the redstone generally has to go straight into it, which as you can see here, this one is working, this one is not. If you're in a situation where you can't get it to work, like this one where you want both the piston to activate and the wire to go beyond, it's easy just to use a repeater. And this is a nice use for repeaters, but it's not actually their primary function. Redstone, once active, will only travel for 15 blocks. As you can see, it comes up too shy of hitting the piston here. Or over here, we have a repeater and it makes it all the way. Now repeaters also have a secondary function where they add delay. By default they have a delay of one tick, which a tick is equal to one tenth of a second. You can cycle through just by right clicking on them from one, two, three, and four ticks is the max. And just give you a view of that. You can see that delay cause there. Now repeaters are also monodirectional they'll only allow the current to travel in one direction. You can see there it travels all the way through, but from this side it stops at the repeater. Now as I mentioned before with the torches, they will activate all wire or all redstone directly in contact with it and above it, as you can see here, until the block that they are on receives power. So as you can see that deactivates that. That deactivates the torch and by extension the redstone above it. And as you can see here, this torch is powering this block, which is why this torch is off. But if we add power to that one, that torch is no longer powering. So this one comes on. This is actually a pretty easy way to transmit a current straight up although it does add a bit of uh, delay after a while. Now, you can also transmit the current through blocks. You can pull it through with a repeater like this, or they can be active like I showed you over there. Now, not all blocks can transmit the signal. A general rule of thumb is if it's opaque, it will transfer, but if it's transparent, it won't. And now we come to the bulk of the tutorial. 
this is what seems to intimidate a lot of people, but this is also the largest part of the redstone world. And these are the logic gates. Now, when you see the big redstone contraptions that can look really daunting, but it's just made up of a lot of these, and each one serves its own little purpose. So I will go through and break them down one by one for you. What we have here is a NOT gate, also known as an inverter. It basically takes a unpowered signal and spits out a powered signal, or vice versa. And this is created just by sticking a torch on the side of a block. What we have here is an AND gate, which this will have a unpowered output until it has two powered inputs. So even with one on, the piston still doesn't extend. But with both on, it does. This is an OR gate, which if either one of these is active, the piston will extend. And this is done just by simply merging the wires together. This is another example of an OR gate without the back feed. So as you can see here, the current goes all the way back to this lever. And if for some reason that's undesirable, you can just build it like this. As you can see, that extends the, pins or the piston, as does that one. Over here we have an X NOR gate, which these are actually pretty useful. They provide a powered output as long as both inputs are equal. So if they're both off, the power will be or the output will be on. But if one's on and one's off, the output will be off. And if both are on, the output will be on. This is a NOR gate. It's just like an OR gate with an inverter attached. So the output will be or the output will be on as long as both inputs are off. As soon as one is triggered, the output will turn off. And this is an N AND gate. This is basically just the AND gate without the redstone torch on the side here to act as an inverter. So as long as both torches are off, or both levers are off, the output will stay on. So to determine which one of these you want to use, it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish. The inverters will by far be the ones that will be most common, and in my builds the AND gates and the XNOR gates are the second most common. Now we come to memory latches, which are some of the most useful things that you can build. <coughs> these will store an input until they're reset. So what we have here is an RS NOR latch, which is just built like this with the two inverters basically connected. And these are the two inputs. And these can be extended out as far as you want. So input one activates it, which as you can see just a second ago, the uh, red, the activated side was reversed. And this one deactivates it, which there you can see how it flipped again. This is an RS NOR latch as well, it's just a condensed version. The main difference besides being smaller is that for this one to work you have to have the wiring on top of the wool blocks here. But it works just the same way. And over here we have a toggle also called a T flip flop. This just has one input which once pressed will activate the output and once pressed again will deactivate the output. These are useful for a lot of things where you don't really want a lever, although a lever will accomplish the same thing in a lot smaller of an area. Which, one way to make this a lot smaller is once pistons were introduced, they created a whole new branch of redstone circuitry. 
Uh, in the video that I've linked in the description, Kimundi 2 does a far better job of explaining them than I ever could. So make sure you check his out if you want to get into it a little bit more. But I'm including this one just because it's very useful and it's a lot smaller than this. But it is a piston based toggle. Oh, one second, let me just use the bed. Okay, and as you can see, it works in much the same way. Which I will actually show you how to build one of these. So to begin you need two pistons, a torch, and at least three pieces of wool. Or whatever other block you're going to use. Put a torch in the bottom there. Array your pistons like so. Then stick the torches on each end of that. And that's really all there is to it. To for your input, you're going to want it just going into the top row. Which you can do that like so, or you can do it on the other side. Or if you want, you can do it right here. It really doesn't make a difference. Then for your output, you just have it coming out through there. And that's that block transmission that I was talking about earlier. Which, there you go. Okay, now for some actual applications for all this stuff. Over here we have a basic sequence lock, which if you want to just put a lock on your castle door or whatever else you're doing, this is kind of an interesting way to do it. This is nothing more than RS NOR latches, just kind of linked together. But when they're done like this, they have to be deactivated in order. In this case, going from right to left. As you can see, once it's activated, it'll just deactivate because it still has the power coming from this block. So in order to actually open the lock, you have to deactivate them all, like so. Which then there is a master reset button. Which the reset button is just built from putting into the reset side of all the RS NOR latches. And once again, these inputs can be extended out as long as you want. If you want to mix them up a little bit and make your own combination. Now with toggles and sticky pistons, you can create hidden doorways, which a lot of people like to do. So push a button to get in, push another button to close the door, or push that same button to open the door back up. This is just accomplished with that piston-based toggle that I introduced earlier. Now if you just wanted one button to get in, and then one button to close the door, then you have a different way of getting out. An RS NOR latch would work just as well in a lot smaller of a space. But I will show you how to build one of these. You have to place your sticky pistons like so, and the reason why they're back a space is so that they have room to retract. button here. And this is just building that piston based toggle again. And this will actually combine a few things that we've learned so far, such as the wire has to be going directly into the piston for it to work, because here for the interest of space we're going to be using a repeater, and because the wire isn't going into this piston it won't activate when this one does. Then I just place the blocks like so.
and just so that they activate at the same time putting a repeater up here as well otherwise it'll be off by a tenth of a second and it's not necessary but those little details kind of bother me sometimes okay and over here is just going to be our other input which instead of wiring it all the way back around here we'll just make our own little one right here now normally if you just run the wire here it will connect there which will cause all kinds of issues but the repeaters won't connect to adjacent wiring so they make a convenient way to do this so now let's just test it out okay there they extend and there they both retract make sure this button works as well okay and that's all there is to that and finally to close out this tutorial I will introduce bud switches or block update detectors these were discovered a while ago and what they do is they detect updates in the blocks around them whether a block is placed or grass grows or anything like that and they come in two varieties this one is self resetting and this one is a toggle which I will show you what I mean here so when a block is placed this one just creates a small burst and it doesn't matter where it is as long as it's directly adjacent to the piston and these are useful in place of a button press for whatever kind of update you're doing and to build these they're pretty simple just you have a place a sticky piston a torch some wool a repeater to get that transmission coming out and the wiring like so now these do exploit a glitch because normally the piston wouldn't be powered by the wire up here but they've been working through several of the patches and I don't believe they're going to be fixed anytime soon now this one like I said earlier is a toggle style which anywhere next to the piston oh, except for right there apparently will just toggle it so once the block is placed it'll power off once it's removed it'll power back on and these are also pretty easy to build now for these ones it's not necessary to have the repeater there on the other ones if you don't it'll keep clocking back and forth until um, the piston glitches and the wool won't retract with the block although the repeater is required right there which there you go and there's always more to learn and no use to discover but hopefully this has given you a solid introduction to redstone circuits the best advice I can give you is just come up with the product or come up with the idea and challenge yourself that's how I started and that's how a lot of people have so good luck